Wake up and smell the coffee, Mr. LaRusso. Extreme situations require extreme measures. Yeah, it's probably a bad idea. Yo, what's guys? Welcome back to Cobra Kai Karate. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we have Cobra Kai Talk, Season 2, Episode 5. And we're bringing on Cobra Kai fans, creators, talk about Cobra Kai and all things. Today, we have a very special guest, a main YouTuber. Love his content. And we're going to bring it on Strike First Media. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Doing very awesome. Uh, so um, if you guys do not know who he is, he has a channel called Strike First Media. He makes a lot of cool stuff. I mean, predictions, theories, all sorts of good videos. Make sure to check it out in the link in the description if you're not subscribed to it already. But yeah, we're going to be talking about his channel, talk about some season five predictions, and all sorts of stuff. So um, yeah, um, before, we, before we start, um, I want to talk about just... How did you get into Karate Kid and Cobra Kai? When did you watch it before? You watched Karate Kid before Cobra Kai. Like when? When did you get into the Karate Kid Cobra Kai universe? You can say. So my parents. So I don't know if you've heard the story of Jacob Bertrand. He his parents gave him like a list of movies. His dad mostly gave him a list of movies to watch before he can call himself a man. Mm-hmm. And my dad had a similar philosophy. Not movies I had to watch to become a man, just movies I had to see from him right. growing up. And that included Rocky. I know you're a big Rocky fan. Yes, for sure. Um, the Goonies, Back to the mm-hmm. Future, and Karate Kid was, of course, on that list. And yeah. I gravitated towards that those type of movies some of the most. That and Rocky. Yeah. I loved both of them. Um, and so when I was in kindergarten, first grade, I saw them and I was just blown away. Like my mom would make these homemade headbands like Daniel LaRusso and Johnny. Um, And a lot of people, like for a lot of people that when they grew up watching these movies, they were a big Daniel LaRusso fan. But I was actually, I leaned more towards Johnny because I kind of gravitated with his character, his parents, like his dad ran off and like they split up and I grew up in a split household and stuff and had to be introduced to step parents like step dads and stuff step parents no. him with sid and like me i got a step dad and stuff so i was growing up at a young age i really gotten like braced into the karate kid movies and so yeah i and then i even took karate when i was a kid and i got back into it I actually just came from a class 10 like 10 minutes ago i just got back nice. so um yeah karate kid has always had a big part of my life nice that's awesome i mean for me i would say i'm more of a newer fan to karate kid i watched it 2020 early 2020 i watched the first karate kids and i watched the two seasons of cobra guy loved them and of course um as a huge rocky fan i was super excited to go on karate kid it was exact same director exact same composer bill conti so a lot of similarities mm-hmm. with it so i feel like um those type of movies are awesome so yeah um and that's well, I want- the thing with these um like with Cobra Kai, it doesn't matter when you became like a fan. Right. It's for everyone. New exactly. fans, old fans, uh, a- anybody, you know, yeah. it's so cool. And like, I know pe- plenty of people who have watched Cobra Kai first and then go back to watch the, it's kind of like with Star Wars. People grew up mm-hmm. with the original trilogy and some people watch the prequels first. It, it doesn't right. really matter. It, that's what's right. so beautiful about it. Yeah, it's amazing. And um, I mean, I remember when I first got into it, just going into the community, um, whether it's on um, social media and the community was just awesome. That's another thing of Corporate Kai, even beyond just the show, the community is fantastic. I mm. mean, it's amazing. I mean, everyone's so nice. And it, um, that's why I, another thing I love about the universe, the community, especially the channels as well, all the channels that we have. And it's just great. So on, on about channels, um, I want to talk about when you, when you got the idea to start your channel, Stripers Media and all of that. That's a great question. So, I mean, when I first watched Cobra Kai, uh, the series, I was hooked like a lot of people on YouTube Red and stuff like that. But I didn't start my channel all the way back in 2019, like your Cobra Kai theories and stuff like that. I wasn't like a day one content creator. I actually created it in May of 2021. So Mm. before season three, it had been a long time since we got any new Cobra Kai. It had been a long time. And so I was hankering for when I found out season three was coming out on early January. I forget the exact date. I was like wicked hyped. And once I saw it, I was like all back in Cobra Kai mode. But the yeah. thing is, I didn't want my hype for the show to die 
as we were waiting for the next season. I wanted people to talk about it with. I mean, yeah. I have some family members that have seen the show. They like it, but they don't love it like I yeah. do, like you do. Yeah, true. And they get sick of me talking about it. But with the Cobra Kai community, I watched plenty of YouTubers beforehand. Yeah. Drew Shamoon with Cobra Kai Nation. Um, who else? Well, uh, Cobra Kai Theory. And it's crazy. Now I get to consider those. I like. I consider them as like friends. Like I talk yeah. to most of them on a day to day basis. And so in May, I was like, I was starting to feel like my passion dwindling a little bit. Like I, I had gotten back into karate that January. That kind of helped a little bit, but I didn't want like it to die. So I was, I had always contemplated making a YouTube channel. I was a big basketball fan in my college days and I contemplated it, but it just seemed like a lot of work and I didn't want to work for it. But then with Cobra Kai, I mean, I know a lot about the lore growing up with the, the films. I know a lot about it. So then I was like, you know what? Screw this. If it works and I grow and I kind of make something out of it, then that's awesome. If I don't, yeah. then it's just, I mean, it just didn't happen. And mm -hmm. so I did it um, and I started my channel and then I just got to see significant amount of growth. And then like, I know you can probably relate to this. When you hit upload, it's like an addiction. You want you want to yeah. keep going back and going like true. Make as much videos as you can. Right. Um, and yeah, I met some wonderful creators along the way that have support like mm. the creators that have supported me since day one. I'm sure you probably know Talking Cobra Kai and the yeah. chosen one. Those two yeah. guys, I owe them everything because they've embraced me since I had a goose egg of subscribers, zero. So yeah. right from the get go, they supported me. So it's been a wonderful journey meeting every all these people and being so involved in the community. And it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Yeah. And now I get to talk about Cobra Kai and I get a little bit of change on the side. So yeah, it's nice. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, I, I love, same for you. I, lo I love watching all the creators and um, of course, Cobra Kai Kid, Cobra Kai Theory. And I love the videos, and I was super invested for season three, waiting for that season. So I remember after season, well, I'm, it was around November when season three is about to come out. I made the channel, but I don't think I posted anything. But it was around, Jan it was January, and season three just came out. And my original name was Eagle Fan Kid, which is kind of a rip off of Cobra <laughs> Kai Kid. So that was my original name. I did a couple videos. It wasn't really going anywhere. I was a little camera shy. I wasn't wasn't really a social person anyway. So I sort of just I stopped it. And um, and yeah, it was even same for you. Back in May, when the Terry Silver promo came out, that's when um, I got super excited. I made a video about that, but then I just sort of deleted it. Wasn't going anywhere. It was not until August where I wasn't planning to be a YouTuber. I just had this crazy prediction in my head of it was like the season four, five, and six prediction. I like this crazy prediction for the rest of the whole series. And um, I remember I was just thinking about this in my head. I was like, all right, I'm gonna make a video about it. Maybe I'll do something. I don't know. And I did it, and that, then it didn't, it didn't really do it, really didn't go too much anywhere. I didn't show my face or anything. I just used my voice. And then I also had a, a second channel that where I did edits, and uh, I had this um, season four fan made edit, and I said I'm gonna post it on this channel as well. And it got quite a bit of views. And this one person gave me a shout out on like a channel. I got nine subscribers, and I freaked out. And I was so <laughs> excited. Really I was so excited that I like I was just the people were actually interested like watching me i mean that just made me so excited and yeah in the beginning i was doing videos all around i was doing like rocky videos doing like rankings on movies i wasn't really just cobra kai i was just so excited i had an audience but in the in time i um you know now i'm more focused on cobra kai videos it's been doing really well and then, yeah i mean i just love talking about it even if it was not in youtube i just love talking about it whether it's just the people and there wasn't really too much people to talk to it about um so i yeah i really related that as well like there's not too much people to talk about um, with it. So with the community, I get to make videos of like even you, other creators, and then I even meet friends on, on YouTube as well. So it's a real mm -hmm. good thing. And I always tell somebody, there's a lot of people that love Cobra Kai, but, and they don't have channels. But they say, oh, I want to start a channel, but I don't know what to talk about. I'm like, if you have a passion for the show, just go for it. I never thought yeah. that I would be here, um, you know, talking to these creators, even just being considered one of the Cobra Kai creators. It's really crazy. And um, if you just have a passion for it, I feel like it could happen no matter what. So that's one thing I always want to point out. And your channel is definitely an example of that as well. So love your channel. Keep up the great work. And yeah. I, I right. want to say congratulations for 800 subscribers, man. That's freaking awesome. Yes, congratulations. 
Thank um, you. But yeah, I appreciate just that. Piggybacking a little bit off of what you were saying, I I got an I think pretty sure I failed every public speaking class I had in college and high school. No. I was an atrocious public speaker. And now look, I can get on camera like it's nothing. Yeah. Because it's something I love to talk about. I don't really have to plan for it. I just like talking like this, it's just sure. off the cuff. And it kind of, like we make it look kind of easy, you know? Yeah. And just, if you have a passion for something, don't be afraid of what anybody is going to say about you because yeah. no matter who you are, there's going to be like negativity in your yeah. comment section. There's going to be haters. You just can't let it get to you. And you just got to keep yeah. grinding and you'll see results um, eventually. Yes, true. That's 100% true. And yeah, I mean, I was a very, I was very shy. I mean, I didn't have really interact with too many people. And even at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't having too many friends. I was really shy at doing stuff. And um, I remember my first collab I did with somebody was Cobra Kai Kid. I mean, I remember I was a huge fan of him and his channel. Mm-hmm. And I, I reached out to him and he, he I, he's, we're going to do an interview. So when I interviewed him, I was super shy. I mean, I, even if it was like a random person, I would, I would even be shy to talk to him. So, but it was Cobra Kai Kid. I've been watching for like two years, or like a year straight. So I was very nervous. But when you, after a while, um, doing collabs with people, I've learned to even talk to people. I'm not that shy anymore. So that's the thing of Cobra Kai, even like beyond the show, like it's helped me get confidence with the channel. That would have been made possible, Cobra Kai. So I feel like Cobra Kai is just a beautiful thing in so many eras. And um, mm-hmm. I just love it. So, yeah, but um, I want to move on to a little bit of season five. Before we talk about predictions, season five, I want to talk about the promotion. The promotion has been mm-hmm. weird. And of course, we got the new news that I know you made a video about today about the Netflix, how they're losing subscriptions, which actually did yeah. actually blew me away because Stranger Things season four is huge. Yeah. Like, huge. So I don't know if people like got in and like canceled it after or something, but because that's really strange to me. But if you guys don't know, Netflix lost a lot of subscriptions. They're losing a lot very fast. Mm-hmm. And uh, why we talk about this for Corporate Kai, because we you know, remember in season three when they brought down the release date like a week to January 1st. So they could move it down to August, which might be too soon because we, but all I'm, so all I'm saying the promotion is going to be crazy and either we get, I don't think they're going to change the date. I mean, they could, but I feel like what they're most likely going to do is go crazy on the promotion. I mean, the promotion is going to be wild, yeah. but what, what do you think about that? Do you think they're going to change the date? What do you think about the promotion? And what do you think about the promotion in general? Do you think we're going to get, what do you think we're going to get next? We're going to get something this month. All sorts of stuff with promotion. What do you, what do you think about all that? So I don't think it's definitely possible they could change the date, but I don't think they're going to just because, like yeah. you said, everything's going to be too congested because we haven't got a lot of promotional stuff. We just just gotten the date announcement and uh, the uh, Kim De Young character announcement. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it will get changed. I think they're just going to stick with it because we're lucky enough it's coming out in September. They could have easily yeah. just been like, yeah, we're going to go Q4, late Q4 again for a release. Yeah. But I mean, I love the, I've been loving the New Year's Christmas time yeah. releases, yeah, but nice. I'm totally fine with getting it in September. As yeah. for what next, I think we could see some, some images, hopefully. Um, I, on, I only, yeah, we're only probably going to be getting the final trailer next. Um, that'll probably be maybe in the net. I mean, they usually release it about a month before the premiere of the season. So yeah, we're probably only a few weeks away from it, which yeah. I think lines up pretty well. I, yeah, I'm, I'm they, uh, I think John Hurwitz got asked this in his Q and a that the promotional stuff is going to be crazy. So I, yeah, yes. They blew us away last year, so I, I'm anxious to see what they have up their sleeves this time around. Yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah. John Harris tweeted like uh, the promotion is going to be crazy. So I definitely feel to me like a promotion like we had not seen before because we do know like the uh, release date was a little different. I do believe that Netflix was going to go for that November December area, but they're losing subscriptions before, so that's sure they probably moved it over there. Because usually we, the first thing we get is not a teaser. We usually got something before that, but we got a. I mean, not a teaser, the date announcement, but. I feel like the next thing, um, I want to get a promo. I think we should get at least one to two promos. And some people say a Mike Barnes promo. I don't think Mike Barnes should get his own promo, but I feel they should do a uh, a Cobra Kai expanding promo. Or maybe they can um, they can release just like um, 
the guy released a commercial of, of Terry Silver, just Ooh. his own thing. Because didn't Good they idea. do that with the Daniel LaRusso thing? All the backs yeah. one. Yeah, so they could do that with with Terry Silver. I mean, that would be cool. Just 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 yeah. fun, just fun, just fun promotion stuff there and there. I think we'll get the official trailer. It comes out like a, a couple days before or around there. I'm gonna say August 18th, 19th, or 20th. Those are the three days. It's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I feel like those are the days for the official trailer. But before then, I feel like promos, pictures, maybe another teaser, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, whatever they're gonna do, I'm I'm really excited for it because. Season five is people are still excited for it, but I feel like to get it really up, it because if season five is not like a huge hit, like like by Stranger Things season four, Netflix is, could be going like a really bad place. Like because besides Cobra Kai Stranger Things, I mean they got a couple other cool shows, but like I feel like those are the main things. And Cobra Kai those is not like top. a huge hit. Yeah, those I mean are the it's gonna part. yeah. So I feel like they need to do it. And some people are even saying like, oh Netflix should go bankrupt. I think they're a little far from there, but. It's definitely they need to really step up on the promotions. I mean, I wouldn't mind if we got nothing, but like for the general fans, I mean, I feel like they need to get it. So, yeah, but yeah, um, there's there's some a lot of fans who hadn't even seen the date announcement. Like I'm yeah. talking about it to some like casual fans, and I'm like, yeah, September 9th, and they were like, wait, what? It's there's a date yeah. a date announcement. I'm like, yeah, go on YouTube, yeah. check it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's. As as much as they're like diehard fans like us, there's still a big majority of just uh, normal, not normal, but more like just the general fans that just watch it there and there. So I feel like those fans are the people we really need to get to because we know that we'll be there September 9th for like two in the morning. But for the other people, they need um we need some good promotion for that. But um yeah, uh, moving on to see some season five predictions and whatnot. Um, what do you do? You have any prediction that you heard or made yourself that you believe in the most? The prediction that you love the most, the one that you want Ooh. to see the most. And do you have one that really just like is like the king of predictions for you? Uh, I got two. I'm gonna. I'll right. say them quickly. That work. That work. So, chosen Terry Silver. I obviously think yes. they're gonna fight. How many times? We don't know. I think we could get two. Um, mm. I think that Terry Silver needs to win at least the first one against chosen whether it be fighting dirty catching chosen off guard i or not even terry silver winning just showing that he's chosen's match like chosen's met mm -hmm. his match i yeah. think that's a necessity because if Te chosen i've seen a lot of people that just think that chosen is coming and just destroy terry silver if that was the case then season five would be the last season i right. would say right um i think because Terry Silver is no joke. I feel like a lot of people are underestimating him. I know when he fought Johnny that he it was a kind of like a sucker kick, like he caught him off guard. But like Terry is, I mean, he's top tier yeah. in Cobra Kai, not the whole Miyagi verse, because obviously that's Miyagi. But Chosen yeah. or Terry's like no joke. And I feel like people, a lot of people aren't taking him seriously. And his yeah. capabilities. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people this season. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, my yeah, next that's one, one thing. Is... Oh, no, go sorry. ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that's one thing I want to see the season. I want to see Terry Silver really get his moment in team karate. And as long as John Kreese, we haven't seen too much of John Kreese fighting. I know you made a video about that. Like we don't see too much of John Kreese um as a yes, fighter. We need like, I feel like we John should Kreese. exactly. Justice so I think John um Kreese. yeah, just for John Kreese. Um, a prison fight scene is one thing I've been wanting to see, and I feel like they could do that. I have said John Kreese will get sidelined a little bit this season, but he'll still have a lot of great moments in jail. And you'll get out of jail somehow. I don't know what the critics are going to do to do that for, but they'll find a way to get out of jail around the end, around the time with Robbie. Um, I feel like his arc will be a little bit as Robbie in jail, but yeah, yeah I was Terry Silver. Say that. Yeah, yeah, Terry Silver. Um, I hope that chosen fight's going to be great. Um, and that's the thing with Terry Silver. I mean, if you just look like he always wants to be in control, and when he's not in control, he just freaks. Even back to like the flashbacks, like when he was not controlling that situation, he just started freaking out. Even in Karate Kid, mm -hmm. even in Karate Kid Three, when Mr. Miyagi beat him, he had like a whole burst burst out. So I feel like if Chosen does get the best of him, he could go off the rails and do something beyond even yeah. what Terry Silver you could do. So I definitely want to see a fight between them because that'll be insane, and even two of them. But I don't know if he'll lose. Um, but I definitely feel like it'll be a close match. I would say Terry Silver wins. But if he just if he just knows that chosen is uh, a competition to him, or like he almost got the best of him, 
I feel like he's really going to take this very, very seriously. And we could, who knows what he's up to. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But, um, yeah, go, go on with your uh, second prediction. Okay. So, we all remember end of season four, Kreese gets arrested. Terry says, and, uh, don't worry about Lawrence. I'll take good care of him, too. And we saw in the season five date announcement that Robbie and uh, Miguel are still having problems gelling, getting along. And with John Hurwitz's recent Q&A asking about the season five finale, he said people will get hurt. Yeah. And I think the person that's going to be getting hurt is Johnny. I think he's going to get pretty badly hurt. And I think that's what's going to bring Robbie and Miguel together because it's someone they both probably the most important male role model in their lives. And I think that's going to be the kind of wake up call they both need to get on the same side and put all the petty stuff aside. Like the past is the past. You stole my girlfriend, this, that, and the other thing we need to let bygones be bygones and work together to defeat the common enemy of Cobra Kai. So yeah, I think Johnny's going to be get not, like on the brink of death, but I think he's going to get a beating of some sorts, whether it be like a gang assault or Terry Silver once again. I think something's going to happen to Johnny, and that may be the catalyst in bringing Miguel and Robbie together. Yeah, I really like that. I haven't heard I haven't heard that one. Um, I feel like there's two ways they could um end the rival, and mm-hmm. one that I've heard and I really like is um. You know, they're having a lot of, or it could actually be both of them, to be honest. Like, let's just say that that happens. Um, Terry Silver um, beats him up or even, like, injures him a little bit. Not like Miguel season two injured, but, like, injured a little bit. And um, maybe they're like, all right, we need to stop this. But maybe they're having arguments. Uh, Actually, I don't know about that. uh, I'll just just say the other one because I don't know if those two would work together. But um, uh, the one I've heard, um, we all see that one fight. Um in the trailer or the data announcement of them fighting. And I definitely feel like that'll be their first fight. I mean, their only fight this season and their last. I mean, I feel like we need one more last epic fight and their rival and that will be it. Cause I know that made a lot of people disappointed, but I feel like that's the only and, and last fight they're going to have physical fight at least. But, um, yeah. I think on top of the stairs, I feel like, um, maybe he accidentally knocks Miguel over again, but instead of him falling, Robbie catches him. Cause they'll just bring them back to that moment, you know, bring them back to that. Uh, that was bad for both of them. I mean, that was really bad for Robbie, really bad for Miguel. And I feel like they, at, at that moment, they can have a heart to heart moment because we never heard Robbie even apologize to him. And I, I thought he really felt really bad. And even in season four, like when he said, like, um, remember the last time he fought, I thought that was, I don't know why he said that. I feel like I'm pretty sure it's just because that the Cobra Kai's was with him. I don't think he, that, that's what he really meant because mm-hmm. I feel like if they just talk with each other heart to heart, that can be the bridge to that. And I feel like that would be a cool way to do it. But I really like yours too, because if um, Johnny gets hurt, they both really care for him. And I definitely feel like Johnny's role this season is going to be just trying to focus on Robbie and Miguel, getting them together. And I feel like they even keep trying. It's not going to work. But when he gets injured by Terry Silver, that's when they realize like, all right, we need to come together. We need to stop this. And that can be when they come together to go after me. I mean, one of my predictions and Cobra Kai has said, yeah, you know. Uh, but one of, one of my predictions that I've been saying, and it, it involves Mike Barnes. Um, this prediction, I think, I was supposed to make a video about a couple days ago. I've been saying it on, on a couple of streams and videos, and I'll just say it here. And um, what, what it is is with Mike Barnes, and it ties into the end finale. Um, first off, Mike Barnes, I doubt this coming the season. I did hear fear that he could come at the end. We do know what Terry Silver said, like, I'll dig up an old friend. I mean, that indicates mm-hmm. Mike Barnes, but he also could be talking about the new sensei coming in. But I don't know. If the, I don't think the creators would teach us like that and not do it. But either way, I think Mike Barnes doesn't come in the season. Either it's a small role, big role at the end or beginning. Doesn't coming in. But um, what the prediction is after Karate Kid Part 3, um, I know Sean Kanan says this. And um, uh, he always indicates that he – that he went down either two ways. He went down, like, he was end up getting worse, probably end up in jail, or he went down a yep. better path and went to, like, the military. I know that's what he said, I'm pretty sure, in your interview and even in yeah. too. So he, he has been saying that a lot. So I feel like I, – I like the one more where he goes to the military, where he goes to the military, he learns discipline, he learns honor. He's still aggressive, but he learns that. And after he goes back to karate, he has his own dojo, and he's like a – 
Johnny in season one. Yeah, he's a little aggressive, but he still has good values. I want to be even more aggressive than than Johnny, but still has good values, and he teaches his students honor, respect, and whatnot. He loves his own dojo, but when Terry Silver goes to him, and why Terry Silver go to Mike Barnes and get him back is to mess with Daniel. I feel like him bringing Mike Bar- bringing Mike Barnes back will definitely mess with Daniel because Daniel was terrified of him. So um, yeah. I feel like him bringing Mike Barnes back will be great. And um, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, um, I was just gonna say yeah, Mike Barnes I think struck the fear in Daniel more than chosen in Daniel for sure. Yeah, yeah, like for sure. Mike Barnes was. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, we'll have to. I think my Barnes will first say no. He doesn't want to do it, but I feel like he'll have financial problems. Like he can't pay off his bills, or he can't pay to keep his dojo going. So he will eventually agree because Terry Silver gave his own dojo, his own Cobra Kai dojo. They'll bring his students to Cobra Kai. I think first he'll like it. He'll be feel back in the game a little bit. But after a while, after Terry Silver starts doing some more stuff. He just won't be all in it, and he wants to get out after Terry Silver starts doing more evil stuff. But so he say like he's getting his students. He wants to get out, but the students I feel like will betray him, sort of like Johnny in season two, and he'll stay with Terry Silver. Maybe Terry Silver starts manipulating his students from the start, which I know is kind of a rehash of that, but I feel like it would be a cool thing to do because it'll leave Mike Barnes with nothing. I mean, no students, no dojo, no money, really nothing. So I feel like he'll go to John Kreese and. Mm he'll help John Kreese get out of jail and uh, maybe hear his side of the story. And I feel like him and John Kreese, they could try to go to Daniel or try to go to Johnny, Johnny, but I feel like they won't trust them again, especially if Mike Barnes with them. So I feel like um, they'll try to do their own thing to take back Cobra Kai or for him, for Mike, Mike Barnes to take back his students. But I feel like it's not going to end well. And I feel like they will realize that the only way to stop them is coming together. I think Daniel realized that too. So I feel like they'll come together and go after Terry Silver. But if that does happen, that means season six should be the last season. Because here's the thing. If they all go after Terry Silver, if everyone gets team ups now and go after Terry Silver and they lose, it won't feel that good. And they won't feel like that awesome ending. So I feel like whenever they do that, they need to win. And that should be the end. And I do not and see the five will not be the end. So I feel like that stuff should could happen. But maybe like a slower way. But I, I, I just don't know how the season five ending. The creators have been saying it's crazy. Um, is I don't know if everybody teaming up because it is everybody teaming up. Season six should be the last season, which I feel like they're gonna do a season seven. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, two questions for you. Um, what do you think about Mike Barnes, his role in season five, and all and what he can do? Because yeah, he could come back as a big bad character and he could stay bad. But I feel like. Terry Silver should be the big bad, and they, should, they shouldn't be competing with each other. And I also do not want Mike Barnes to be a side villain. I feel like if he comes back, he should be getting a redemption, or he should already had a redemption. Because some will say Terry Silver had a redemption in the beginning. I feel like that wasn't really a redemption. I feel like he was more just hiding who he was, that he was just all an act. And um, I feel like Terry he was always evil. But I feel like with Mike Barnes, it was something different. But I don't know. Um, but what do you think about Mike Barnes and his role? And what do you think the ending of season five will be? Or what do you think that could play out? Who wins? Or what do you think? What's your prediction on that? So, yeah. So, I, it's actually, I think I can answer both with a little theory that I've had for a little while. It's something happens, whether it's like, I mean, there's a theory that Miyagi Do is going to get burnt down and stuff, or something's, yeah. gonna, I think yeah. it's going to set off Daniel in like his fit of rage that he has. He's going to storm. This could be far fetched, but I just kind of like the way it would play out. He yeah. storms to the Terry's main dojo, uh, the, uh, the main dojo that we see in the teaser trailer, and he's kind of like, like, like shouting at him. And then um, Terry's kind of like, we get the scene with him and with the towel. I think his new dojos they're all futuristic. They're gonna have the steam rooms, yeah. all the, uh, all that stuff, the whole nine yards. T- Terry's gonna be in the steam room at his dojo. I think. That's why he's got the towel around his neck and he's like, I told you not to play with fire. And I, cause a lot of people say he could be saying that to other people, but I feel like that's not, you're playing with fire. I feel like that's not like a thing he's just going to go around and say to multiple people. Right. I feel like that's, you're playing with fire. Danny boy is the only t- other time he's going to say that. Right. And so it makes sense for him to be saying that to Daniel in the steam room at the dojo i think it would be at the dojo because daniel wouldn't be at terry silver's house 
Um, yeah. So I think that's where it's going to happen. And then he's going to say, I told you not to play with fire. Um, and then Daniel's kind of like, what, what the hell are you talking about? And then Mike Barnes comes out on what he's talking about, shithead. Just like he did in the Karate Kid. Oh, man, that would be so cool. Uh, I, I do like that. It would be a little too on the nose, and a little too cheesy and nostalgic, but I, I like that idea. I think I it's like I, I do. Yeah, it, it is definitely possible. I do like that. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing I've seen, he says not to play fire, and then he finds out that maybe he maybe he did something where he knew Daniel would be coming. Because we know that Terry Silver is like, the master at manipulating people. So maybe he knew Daniel would come over and then he said, you'll not play a fire. Then you'll find out that like Miyagi-Do is burning right now. Maybe he said people to burn it. And with the miyagi burning, I like it. It's a cool thing. It's a cool way to bring people together a little bit, but I just don't know if they would do that. Um, because that's things so iconic to um, the Karate Kid universe. And it's like one of the only things left off from the Karate Kid universe rather than the characters. I mean, of course we have the van, and uh, we had well, we had the car, not the van, the car that Daniel has, and also the dojo. So I feel like they should maybe not do that, but I don't know. Whatever they're doing, I feel like it's gonna be the most awesome ending we had, or at least the most. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, if if they burn down Miyagi Do, dude, that's gonna hurt so is, many people so badly. Yeah. I, okay, so I did. I in my last stream, I was asking people. What would like be the most gut wrenching for you if Chosen dies in season five or Miyagi Do burning down? It's a tough question, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would. Dang, it's hard to pick. I mean, Chosen dying would suck. I mean, it really would. But yeah, okay. Um, I would have to pick Miyagi Do burning down. I mean, I love the Miyagi Do dojo, but Chosen. Um, I love his character. I feel like he's going to have a lot of amazing stuff in season five. And um, I even believe we'll get a chosen spinoff eventually. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I think it'll be more of a prequel. I don't think – I feel like when Corporate Kai ends, that's it. They're not going to continue the story, but they're going to do a couple prequels. So I feel like they could do that, like Karate Kid, um, after Karate Kid Part 2 and like before. But, yeah, I mean, I might have to go with uh, – you're going to burn it down, but it is actually a tough question. So I think that should indicate why you should not. I, mean, I don't think the creators would take that risk of like that because that could, who knows, that could like really like divide the community. Some people like hate it, some people love it. And I just feel like we should leave the original Karate Kid stuff alone um, mm -hmm. with the location. But the prediction of it burning down is really nice. And we know that the fire stuff, they've been teasing a lot, whether it's the date announcement or not the date announcement, the announcement season five. Um, of course, in the trailer and all the stuff they've been doing. But whatever's going to happen, I know something with fire is going to happen. They're going to do something with fire. So Definitely. Yeah. You know what would be an interesting spin-off? You know uh, the guys who played Young Crease and Young Silver? Oh, yeah. Maybe like a post. Like yes, after we've seen I, all the flashbacks, like just after that, and see Crease making the original yeah. dojo his own. I think that I have, would be kind of cool. Yes, I have been saying that. And I'm, I actually have a new – I have like a series on my channel that I'm starting – it's about um, Cobra Kai spinoffs because it's a five-part series. I my I, I have two out. The first one's a Mr. Miyagi prequel. Second one's a Chosen, and the third one is going to be that because I really like it. First, I love the actors who play them. I feel like they're doing very very well, and I want to see that switch of the Terry Silver and um, John Kreese that we see in those flashbacks to the one we see in Karate Kid Part Three. Be or not? Mm -hmm. sorry, I said Karate, just Karate Kid in general because yeah. they do not they. they they are the same characters, they're the same values, but they just don't feel the same. And I feel like like that, like the origins of Cobra Kai would be cool. They open up the dojo for the first time. Um, maybe um we could see him. I know that they went to the Green Berets and like we know that John Cree saved his life more. So I feel like we get more of that. I definitely feel like I just made a video like today um about um, John Cree having flashbacks of it in jail. I feel like seeing him have flashbacks in jail of um Terry Silver and stuff would be really cool. Because here's one thing that I, I this was our last question to close out the video. Do you think Terry Silver actually ever cared for John Cruz as a friend? Because look, um, Terry Silver, um, when he went to him after in those season three flashbacks in Vietnam, maybe he went to him like I owe you, and he basically said that, manipulating him a little bit because maybe he saw like he could like he saved his life, he saved him out of that situation. 
maybe he saw John Kreese as a tool or something. I mean, that, and that may be a little too much, maybe a little too on human for someone like Terry Silver. But if he did do that, because we know he saved them in the future, and um, I don't know, it's a cool thing because if he is, and some people ask why would he help him in Karate Kid Three? I mean, I think he just, just likes to torture people. I mean, he was pretty messed up in Karate Kid Three. Um, but what do you think about that? Do you think um, that he ever cared for John Kreese as a friend, or was he just more there as somebody to use for his own benefits? I think he did at least before he took over his father's business because the money, the the drugs, and the business, that can do a lot to you as and wear on your, like, your personality over time. Uh, because if you look at Twig from the first flashbacks, he seemed like a nice stand-up guy, a little bit of a wimp, but, hey, he was a decent person. And um, mm-hmm. even in the second flashback, Back, set of flashbacks from season four he was still like a pretty stand-up decent guy i mean he just learned martial arts so he's got a little more confidence i think he i think he's i honestly i think he always cared about john crease even in season four because honestly i blame most of what happened to terry on crease because he was like he brought him in terry was doing a phenomenal job as a sensei he was probably rivaling johnny is my favorite sensei before like the whole minefields thing and then so oh, yeah. basically terry he's like all right no fighting till the tournament and then he's like no we strike first we show no mercy and then when terry does do that he's like no 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 you need to fall back in line behind me and he's like it's he's kind of playing mind games with him and then he's like you know what i and then he keeps pulling the the vietnam card making him guilty and i yeah it's just I I have I don't blame Terry Silver one bit because John Kreese was a piece of crap yeah. to him. Yeah, it's so. true. And that, yeah, that's one that I definitely agree with that. Um, that's one thing I want to do with John Kreese. I want to see um, him in jail, and one thing they could do, I want him to understand and start to know how much he messed up, and just really knowing how. Because I never feel like John Kreese was think that he was doing was bad i feel like what you think he's doing is good i think i think his original plan from season two was just was to come back go to johnny and teach him i don't feel like everyone take over but i feel like he was teaching him because look it, back in vietnam he didn't strike first you could say or he didn't um do the lesson that he was taught and his friend died because of it so i feel like that's really deep in his beliefs now and when johnny was going to get that even though it's just like teaching karate I feel like it was really, I feel like that's why I took over. And I feel like what he's teaching is right. But I feel like in season five, I feel like that's when he realized what is wrong and what that what is wrong. And he returned back to the person he was before he got taught in Vietnam and before Vietnam. I feel like that could be the redemption. And yeah, he did screw up in um, in season four and basically every season in Cobra Kai so far. And um, yeah, I definitely blame him for what happened with Terry Silver. But I do believe that he will get redemption this season yeah and it's yeah. it's like what, one more thing is uh it's like what you said um like crease he lost a friend in the vietnam war because he didn't strike first he didn't like he didn't have that mentality yet yeah. and yeah like you said he wanted to come into cobra kai and teach with johnny but he realized it his his johnny's version has changed and he didn't want he just doesn't want history to repeat itself and in a way, John Kreese was right because Miguel showed mercy and he nearly died because of it. So I don't agree with him taking the dojo, but I do kind of agree that striking first and showing no mercy sometimes can save your life. True. But I also Johnny with like the honor, I get that too. So like each style and philosophy has its own benefits. It's just how you right. use them that True. will make you, who, right. you who, who, who you are yes so. all right all right guys that'll wrap up that video thank you strike this media for joining me on this we've been going for around 40 minutes so definitely time flies i mean we're just when you talk yeah. to scorber kai time flies but um i appreciate you guys for jo- i appreciate you joining me um i know i've been trying to get you on for a while and it's been great to have you on and um yeah make sure to subscribe to his channel link in the description if you haven't already he does great videos um and yeah thank you for joining me um you're the best and i'll see you all next time Peace. Of course, ma'am.
Cobra Kai Karate.